What's up backgammon nerds? In this video we're gonna talk about a very tricky topic which is the post Crawford trick as I like to call it. So sometimes when you see grandmasters play you might be wondering why isn't the post Crawford trailer cubing? Like why doesn't he just double? It's an automatic double. What's going on? What is he waiting for? Is he forgetting to cube? And actually what is going on in this scenario is that the, the player who's trailing in the match in the post Crawford game, so let's say, it's, uh, let's say you're one away uh, and I'm three away in the post Crawford games. Sometimes I might trick you into getting a tough decision later on rather than just giving you an automatic uh, cube in the early game where you have an easy decision whether to have a free take or free drop. In this case, if three away, one away, you would have a, three, a free take because whether I'm two away or one away is still one game post Crawford because we're going to double. So you can just, you have a free take if you just win the game 1% of the time and doesn't lose any gammon uh, and you don't, don't lose any gammon, that, then you have a take. Um, but when you add gammons to the mix, all of a sudden it gets complicated because the leader doesn't want to lose a gammon. That would lose him the entire match. So let's try to play out a sequence here and uh, I can try to illustrate how this would play out. And this is actually a, 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 a sequence from one of my own games where I applied this trick and made, uh, gave my opponent such a tough decision that made him blunder. So let's play this little game out here. We are three away, one away post Crawford, which means that I could just automatically double. But since my opponent, in this case you, have a free take, I decided to wait a little bit and try to give you a tough decision. The risk of waiting to double is that you might lose your market and then you might have been, Ay, why didn't I double? I could have won a gammon in this game and four points won the entire match. So that's a horrible thing to happen. You don't want to lose your market. So if there is volatility, make sure that you double. However, if it's slightly less uh, low on volatility and you could try to wait a little bit, try to get into a little bit of a stronger position just to give your opponent this tough decision. So let's try to play out this game here. So I opened up with, uh, with a 3-1 three, three here, my best opening roll here. So that's perfect. And then my opponent rolled a 5-1, which is kind of a poor roll. And now, according to Extreme Gammon, this is a automatic double and it's a huge take because my opponent here, in this case you, you have a huge take here. You have a free take. So it would be too much to just give up this whole game and allow me to get one single win away from winning the match. It's much better to take it. And if you lose, I'm still just one single win away from winning the match. The only thing that can happen from your perspective is that you take it and lose a gammon. Anyway, rather than just doppling here, I took a micro error of a couple of millipoints of equity and I decided to just take a roll to see if I could get into a little bit stronger position and give my opponent a tough decision. So here I rolled another 3-1. So I rolled a 3-1 and rather than playing uh, the double match point or money game play where you split and flex, I played this one. I played a checker down uh, from the midpoint just to add to the blitz attack here. Add more ammunition and increase my blitz value. This is, this is the best play, by the way, because when the cube eventually comes into play, all of my gammons will win the match. So that's huge. Um, so I made this play. Now my opponent rolled a 5-2, which is, again, not a good roll. Uh, so you get the 5-2 here. And he found the best play, which is just to run out all the way out here to the 16 point. Now, again, my position just got a bit stronger. Uh, again here but one more time I decided to not cube I was gonna wait to see if I can get into a little bit stronger position and try to give my opponent a tough decision this is a little bit more risky now because there might be some market losers like what about a double four that blitzes followed by a fan and now he has two on the bar I would lose my market so there are, here I took a slightly bigger mistake I believe it was like I don't remember eight or nine milli points it's still a very small mistake but slightly bigger than before so I rolled a 4-1. So the best play here with a 4-1 is to hit with a 4 and then just build a 9 point here. My opponent rolled a 4-5. Again, a pretty bad roll. He has to play the 5 down here. Now he's stacked. He's vulnerable here. And of course, now I can't wait longer. Now I really have market losers. That's anything that just 
attacks here and, and followed by a fan would be a market loser because all of a sudden I can win Gammon and win the entire match. So now I must cube. It's too volatile. I cube. And after I cubed, I realized, aha, this was actually what I was looking for because this is not an easy decision for my opponent. He knows that he has a free take, but if he loses a gammon, he's gonna lose the entire match. So this one is tough. You know, he's so scared of losing a gammon here that he eventually dropped. And that's actually a blunder. This is still a take because you still win enough games here. He has a free take and uh, the gammon threat is not that powerful just yet. So this is a take, but I got my opponent to commit a blunder because he was too scared of the gammon. So that's pretty cool. Um, you, here you see it like in practice, uh, giving my opponent a tough decision. It actually worked out. Uh, then I also looked at some other sequences here because what if I hadn't rolled the 4-1? Let's go two rows back here before I rolled the 4-1. Let's say I had rolled the double four, which was my most powerful roll here. So that, the best play would be to hit and then come down and blitz attack on the ace point. Make the double hit. This is not the best play in double match point, but in a gammon go scenario, this is the strongest play. Um, okay, so depending on what my opponent rolls now, it's going to be a, a drop most of the time. If he comes, if he fans with both, it's a huge drop, huge, huge, huge drop. If he comes in with one of them, it's still a huge drop, but he might be fooled into taking because again, this is a tough decision at post Crawford for the leader, you know? Again, I would be giving my opponent a chance to commit a huge blunder. This is a redouble, uh, sorry, a, a double, and it's a huge drop. I believe it's like 190 millipoints drop or something, really big drop. But over the board, this is not easy. You know, he might screw it up. And even if he comes in with both checkers, this variation, I had a look at this variation as well. According to XG, this is also a drop, albeit a small one but still a drop. So even in one of these sequences here, again, you're giving your opponent tough decisions. So that's the post Crawford trick. I hope you enjoyed this video and now you know what's going on when you see uh, an expert player or a grandmaster waiting to double an automatic double in the post Crawford games. See you next video, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching this video. Did you smash that like button? Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to not miss out on future videos. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and my personal Instagram, margolson 10 And see you in the next video.